Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Man. I'm super nervous. I'm so nervous. I am. Can you just keep those off? I'll ask a better one. Just turn them off. <laughs> I'm standing in the line. I don't know what you guys are doing, man. I've been called by the car for something in the line. Thank you, God. Man, Jesus is so amazing. And he's so real. His truth is so real. And I, what, I, what I really feel stirring in my heart, and really my wife and I's heart together, is the truth is the truth. Is the truth. And Jesus is I am the way, the truth. And the life. There's no other truth except for Jesus. And another way that word truth can be translated is, is the reality. You know what the definition of reality is, brother? Things as they really are. He is the things as they really are. He is the truth about my life. He is the things as they really are about why I'm alive, why, why I woke up this morning. Things as they really are, it's Jesus. And so many times I think we're waiting for one of these songs. It's not the songs that set you free, it's the truth. Jesus said, you'll be my disciples, indeed, if you abide in my word, and you'll know the truth. You have to know it for yourself, tangibly know it for you, and you'll know the truth, and that truth that you know shall make you free. Then he goes on to say, and if the Son has set you free, you will be free indeed. And what I'm going to tell you tonight is stop waiting for a prophetic word when we have the word that declares you're free, that says we've been justified by faith. That says we're seated with him in heavenly places. This says we have such peace with God through Christ Jesus our Lord. This says I should no longer live for myself, but for him who loved me and died for me and rose again. Your Bible says that. And, and as, as much as you believe you're free, is the same measure that you'll believe you're free. Brother, next time you play the piano and you mess up, don't shake your head. Because you're not a monkey performing on a stage. You're a son of God. And the Holy Spirit is using you to minister to his body. Never again put yourself under pressure and under a yoke that's not from him. That's not from him. Because there's a truth that says you're free. There is a thing as they really are. And what I want to grin in you tonight is I just want to, to tell you that the redemption of Jesus Christ goes deeper than anything we could have ever imagined. Right. Let me read the scripture to you. He sees you right where you're at. He knows what you're battling. But you have to stop. Feelings are so come and go. Feelings are so cheap. Feelings are so circumstantial. You don't feel your way into freedom. You fail your way into freedom. You have to stop waiting for a feeling. You have to stop waiting for an emotion. You believe by faith. Feelings change with circumstances. Feelings change with, how, with the season of your life. Feelings are just feelings. And they have to be filtered with truth or else they'll define you. Feelings was never made to define you. The just live by faith. And the just walk by faith. Not by feelings. Feelings are so tit for tat. They're here and there. You have to stop living by feelings. Listen, he knows where you're at. I had my wife, she made this list, and I just want to read it. He, he knows, he's the God who knows our battles. He knows, he knows your struggle. He knows your depression. He knows your anger. He knows your anxiety. He knows your addiction. He knows your bondage. He knows your past, your temptations. He knows your insecurities, your jealousy, your envy, hurts. And he knows what you look at. He knows what you give yourself to. He knows your sickness. He knows, listen to this one. I can say this. Because I know how I live. He knows what medicines you take. <laughs> he knows your thoughts. He knows your feelings of not being loved. He knows your feelings of feeling like a burden or that you're too much. He knows your thoughts of suicide. He knows your pride. He knows your bitterness. He knows your unforgiveness. But here's the thing. I want to tell you that the redemption doesn't just go up, but that the redemption also goes down. And let me, I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna share something with you tonight. I'm so nervous to share it. But what I'm, what I'm going to share with you tonight, I'm going to so open up my heart to you. And Paul says it like this. He says in the Bible, I opened up my heart to you. And there was nothing hidden. I'm going to tell you tonight. It's on cameras. People are going to watch it online. There's two churches here. Lots of people. And I'm going to tell you tonight. My, my mom and dad don't even know this. What happened to me? Yeah. Let me read the scripture to you. This is talking about spiritual gifts. But listen, listen to what the Bible says about Jesus. 
It says to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift, which is immeasurable. That grace will never run out of your life. You can never come to the end of the grace of God for your life. Therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. Now this he ascended. We get that part, but watch this. What does it mean but that he also first descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is also the one who ascended, come on, far above all the heavens that he might fill all things. Everybody say all things. All say it like you mean it, all things. All say he fills my hurt, he fills my depression, he fills my frustration. All things, he went down. Listen, I'm, I'm tired of this, of this, well that triggers me, well that triggers me, no. No, if it triggers you and you can't go around certain people because it triggers you, it's because you don't know yet that he's ascended and descended and fills all things. You don't know yet he's made all things new. And that person is still defining you, and that is idolatry. And see, what the enemy has meant for a temptation, God wants to turn into a testimony. And he wants to turn it into a, a, a pathway for truth. A trigger is something that somebody has used a lot, and people use it well. It's almost become an excuse for people just to be the way that you are. You have no excuses for you to be the way that you are. When Jesus came, took everything that the enemy ever put us put on our lives, nailed it to a tree, and rose again the third day. You have no excuse. He says, be born again. You must be born again. You have no excuse. He wasn't just born that way. He says, be born again. Be born again from God. You were born once from your parents, now you're born again from God. You guys okay? I want to tell you how deep the redemption goes. Listen to that scripture. I want to read it again. Now that he ascended, if he, if he went up, that means he first went down. And I think sometimes in our life, we're so afraid of those things in our past. We think he just redeemed the good things, the pretty things, the things of us that was good. And I'm going to share a testimony because emotions don't set you free. The truth does. And so you may get emotional during what I'm going to share with you. But, man, that's all right. It's truth. It's freedom. Because I, the, this is a revelation of just how deep the redemption goes. And I, I can tell the testimony without being too graphic. But when I was 10 years old, nobody knows this except for my wife. And we was married for about six years. Forever sure. When I was six years old, I went to my friend's house. I was... Someone woke me up in the middle of the night and they was doing things to a 10-year-old boy that should never happen to a 10-year-old boy. And I remember I was, I, I could remember it. And I remember there was a door in front of me. I remember thinking this, I didn't know what was happening to you, but I knew this was wrong. This is not right. I remember thinking these thoughts. And so when, I, when I'm telling you the things I'm telling you, I'm telling you I've had opportunity to overcome some stuff in my life. And I remember there was a door in front of me and I remember thinking, if I could just get out that door, I could be... I can't stop the situation. 10 year old little boy, 10 or 11, probably 10, I think. And, and one time, because I don't, I don't allow that stuff to define me. What happened in your past to redemption is so great. Listen to this. I want to tell you a vision that Jesus gave me. And I thought it was just for me, but he, he told me to share this. My, my heart is open. My heart is open to you. And so do with it what you will, because there is nothing there that has kept me there. Because he has set me free. And I had a vision one night where I was seeking the Lord. And I, could, I that room just kept trying to come back into my mind. And I would put it out. It's what I do with my thoughts. I take them captive to the obedience of Christ Jesus. I don't let them define my life. As soon as the enemy whispers in, I say, that's a lie. It can't come into my mind. So many people are allowing a lie to turn into a stronghold in their mind. And then they speak it out. And then when you begin to speak it out, it becomes your reality. Because that's what a lie wants to do. It wants to become a stronghold. And then you, the Bible says it like this. You'll always speak what you believe. Yeah. And if you believe that's who you are, that's what you're going to speak. You're going to come. And then you're going to come into partnership with what the enemy is saying about you. Yeah. I've never allowed this thing to, to, take captive, uh, to take a place in my heart when he set me free. Yeah. Never allowed the person. That person was acting outside of their identity in Christ Jesus. They have no idea who he is what they're made for, or why they're alive on this earth. Why would I allow them to have a seed in my heart that he's made for? Yeah. And I had a vision one night. I was worshiping Jesus, and that room kept coming to my mind. It was coming, coming, coming. And I felt the Lord. I felt peace. And all of a sudden, I'm telling you this happened in my life. And, uh, and Jesus walked into that room. 
And I was, and he picked my body up like this, and he carried me out. And now any time that ever tries to come back into my mind, I don't see the room. I see Jesus carrying me out. Because what the enemy meant as a trigger has now become a temptation. What he meant as a cage has now become a conduit for freedom. And I'm telling you, he just didn't ascend, but he also descended. His redemption goes so deep, but he doesn't just redeem the parts of you that are pretty. He redeemed the parts of you that you may have been ashamed of, that you have hidden, that nobody else knew about. He goes down to the very depths of your soul. And people think I've never walked through something. No, I preach this stuff so passionately because I know what I've walked through. And that has not changed my heart or the reality of the gospel in my life. He carried me out. And there's so many things in our lives that's keeping people bound. It may have been when you were 15 and an adult walked into the room and stuck a needle in your arm and sent you on a route to, to just that was nothing but brokenness and living hell. And every time you think about that, you just see brokenness. I'm telling you, he was there. And his redemption goes so deep, he wants to pick you up and carry you out. Wow. Not this, let me read it again. Listen, this brings new light to this verse. When he ascended on high, he led captivity captive, so he went down, grabbed captivity, and then he went up and he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. Now this he ascended, what does it mean that he also first descended into the lower parts of Pastor Josh? He who descended is also the one who ascended and took all those things captive that was in my heart, that he might fill all things. Tonight, right now, I really believe that in this room, see, freedom isn't just you can go up here and dance. There was actually one time, last time Dan was here, there was a couple dancing. They got in a fight. He left. She was hitchhiking up the road, but they was in front of the stage dancing. And every, every right, they look like they're free. But are you really free? Do you know how deep that redemption goes? Do you know how deep the blood really ran? Do you really understand the depths of the love of Jesus? The depths that it fills all things. Because when you do, there's no trigger, there's no attitude, there's no yesterday that can ever define your today. If he fills all things, my mom, I'm telling nobody knows that about me. My heart is open to you because he told me to. And I was nervous and I've been I've been nervous for two days. But I believe there's freedom in this room. And I'm, I don't even want to give an altar call, but if you want to come to the front and just picture that. Because here's the thing. God shows no partiality with men. If he did it for somebody else, he did it for you. If you hear that experience, you go, man, I wish he'd do that for me. He did. I just told you. Put yourself in my shoes and see him carrying you out of that room. See him carrying you out of that car wreck. See him carrying you out of that place. That's what he did for me. I, I'll never forget it. That's all, that's all I can see now. I don't even see what it was. all I see is my king carrying me out. And so if that's you tonight, I praise the Lord, when you come back, I'm done. There's freedom for you. There's freedom for you. And if you need to come, come, there's freedom for you. He fills all things. Not just some things, not just the good things. Not just the surface things, not just the shiny things. He fills all things. He was there. Don't you get it? He was there. When I was saying, I didn't know anybody was there. He was there. But you have to begin to believe that. For you. I'm accounting three if you need that. I really believe. Just come up here. And we're just going to worship Jesus. It's not about emotion. It's not about, it's not about that. It really is about that. I hope you hear my heart. It's about you believing the truth. And he ascended on high. And he led captivity captive. Yeah. You ready? I want to count to three. If I really feel like you're going I want to count to three. Man, there's so many things right now. I really believe God wants to wash out of our soul. I believe he wants to wash things out of our bodies. He wants to wash wash. Did you know when you fear and have anxiety, it produces chemicals in your body? I believe just right now he's, those things from yesterday, he's just washing it out of you. I believe tonight, you're going to step into a new level of cleanliness. 
tonight you're going to step into a new level of clean with the Lord tonight the truth is becoming more real to you than it was when you first got here and it's that truth that will set you free are you ready one two Pray, and I'm going to get out of the way of the Holy Spirit. And I hope I didn't offend any of you tonight. That's not my heart. It's really not. Father, God, you're a good Father. And Jesus, I just thank you that you ascended on high. That you led captivity captive. I thank you that the things of yesterday have lost their hold, they've lost their taste, they've lost their caves, they've lost their yoke, they've lost their pressure. Right now, Jesus, I thank you, Father, for freedom. Everything about you is freedom, God. Freedom right now from the left to the right. In every heart, every mind, every soul. Thank you, Jesus. 